What follows are the recorded audio logs and some visuals from the Elite Dangerous 2020 Halloween event that starts at the Adamasta Megaship in the Chukchan system. If you've not followed the trail that leads from there then what you're about to see and hear should be considered spoilers and you might want to stop watching now. It's Friday the 20th of October 3111. This is Professor Penelope Carver. I'm making this log for our own records and keeping it separate from the official logs we're sending to our employer. Why? Well, I'm still concerned about working for Azimuth Biochemicals, to be honest. Obviously we take on all sorts of contracts for a living and this isn't our first top secret commercial project. But the rumours about this corporation... <sighs> anyway, my people can handle anything, I'm sure. Azimuth are certainly paying well for our skills. I'll give them that. And those debts of mine aren't going away by themselves. Colsac Nebula has turned out to have a lot more scientific value than I expected. We established a site on this planet on the 13th after we detected some very odd signals and the whole team is excited about what we found. That's another reason I'm logging this. If this turns out to be a big discovery, I want our names attached. The things growing here are like nothing on record. Definitely organic life, but with crystalline or metallic elements and chemistry that even O'Keefe can't make sense of. They're giving off signal bursts on all sorts of frequencies. So are they living organisms or machines of some kind? Murphy and Sheng both think they're alien in origin, as in constructed by non-humans. But Kamalo found that so hilarious we had to turn off his comms. Our transport ship is long gone by now. But Taylor's using the beacon to transmit our findings back to the company in the Chukchan system. She said the built-in encryption software is top of the line. Which makes me think the stories about Azimuth and its rivals might be true. They obviously want to keep whatever we find or to them. Oh. Something's going on. I can hear everyone shouting. D did the scouting party find something? This is Professor Carver, 27th of October. 3111. Well, hopefully this log will record. Half of our equipment isn't working properly right now. Everything's changed since we found the crashed ship. For one thing, it's... Uh, it's... Alien. Definitely non-human technology. I should sound more excited, I know. Every scientist's dream. Isn't it? But something about this just feels wrong. I know the others feel the same. Even Kamalo isn't smiling anymore. We're still mostly in the dark about the object we retrieved from inside the wreckage. Is it the pilot or the cargo or maybe some organic component of the ship itself? It seems totally inert, but We've had electromagnetic interference all over the base since we brought it back. And that can't be a coincidence. Storing it has caused problems. Shang lashed something together using the strongest bulkheads they could find, but apparently it's still breaking that down. The equipment failures meant O'Keefe couldn't fully analyse its chemical structure, making him so angry that he actually attacked Kamalo for telling him to calm down. I've never had to break up my people like that. We've worked together for years. It's Murphy I'm most worried about, though. He can't tear himself away from those... growths. 
on the surface. The stones, he calls them. Like the uh, Neolithic standing stones on Earth. We keep finding him out there in his suit, standing under the jet black sky, staring at them. He won't tell us why. We've been sending back reports, but Taylor just relayed a message that made my blood run cold. Azimuth has ordered us to cease all transmissions and await the arrival of their megaship, the Adamasta, which will transport us and our samples to a secure facility. And now I'm wondering why I got involved with a corporation that's rumored to have its own private army. Put everyone at risk by taking this job. I'm going to try making this log again while well, the data drives are still functioning. They could go again at any time. Nothing works properly anymore. Especially not us. It's the 30th of October. The object in our storage cage has become noisy. I have a suspicion it's even noisier on infrasonic frequencies which would explain why everyone is on a knife's edge and unable to sleep. I would ask Mahmoud to do some studies, but he's in the infirmary after his run-in with Kamala. God, I've never seen my team like this. What's wrong with them? But that's not the important thing. I don't think the ship that crashed was alone. Because yesterday, O'Keefe came bursting in through the airlock like a pack of wolves was after him. He said there were lights shining down on the growths and on Murphy, who was just standing there. He couldn't make out where they came from, only that the nebula above us seemed to be moving. He said... He said the night was opening up like a giant mouth. I don't know where Taylor's got to, so I tried the comms beacon myself and found a message saying the Adamaster has arrived in the system. That should be a relief. But actually, it twists my gut. What are Azimuth going to do with the thing we found? And what are they going to do with us? It's working. Soon link is working. Can anyone hear me? Is anyone still back at base? This is... I don't remember. I'm not... Dominic, don't, Dominic Murphy. That's, that's who I am, yes. This is Dr. Murphy reporting. I'm a geologist, part of Professor Carver's planetary survey team, but I, I, I think, I think they're all dead. Uh, I was actually with the stones when the sidewinders arrived. I watched them come down like, like birds with, with broken wings. Lights flickering on and off, just just like the base had been for days. There were soldiers everywhere with with with, with rifles and armored suits. I, I think they loaded the cage onto one of the ships, which which took off again, uh, just about. And then a few of the soldiers. I saw the flashes inside the buildings. Gunfire. Yeah, uh, something exploded. The main comms relay, I think. But but then then then, then came more lights. Strange lights, like like that rippled like snakes, and 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 that and, 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 and blackness again, opening up in the sky. They tried to get. They tried to get away on foot, running out to to where I was hiding, and I thought he, I thought he'd see me. And they were all flying up, like. Like toy soldiers thrown in the air, pulled up into the lights. Now it's just us. Me and the stones. They're all I can hear. Much louder now, but not hurting like people's voices used to. Loud but far away. This is 
Professor Carver. I've just got time to record this before the others join me, in case we don't make it. Things went to hell on the Elamaster much faster than before. When it left orbit without picking up the rest of my team, we were furious. Weirdly, so were some of the soldiers, mercenaries, just like the rumors said. They demanded to know why half their squad had been left behind, but the bridge crew refused to explain anything. And then the power fluctuation started. Sheng O'Keefe and I knew what was coming. And the cage they've constructed in the cargo hold isn't going to be strong enough. Even the Adamaster's hyperdrive keeps failing. They're making emergency repairs to it now, while we're passing through some unexplored system with half the ship in darkness. And this sounds crazy, but even though the nebula is 300 light years behind us, it feels like it's reaching out, trying to drag us back, swallow us whole. When all the security systems crashed, I took my chance and broke into one of the sidewinders, uh, and we were going to jump ship. I need to get my people out, the few who are left, and I'm the reason they're here, my stupid, selfish greed. I can hear screaming, shooting. It's happening again. Where's Shane and O'Keefe? I think the hyperdrive is coming back online. I need to launch. Damn it, where are they? I'm sorry. I have to get out. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then, 07 Commanders, follow the Greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toe strap. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.